the intelligent design, what all is involved with that and how is that being used when you're manufacturing these for the customers? So because our, our models are based in Europe, there's a tremendous concern about energy consumption. So efficiency is extremely important to what we build. And so we do things like direct coupled underwater permanent magnet motors. Okay. And when you do that, you save 15 to 20% in horsepower required to turn the same size pump. And that so can be a huge number. Direct coupled magnet. Uh, sorry. Permanent magnet motors. Permanent magnet motors. Those are, those are with... So those are being used when that hose is going down? Like they're actually underwater? It is underwater, yes. That okay. would be 40, 50 feet underwater. Okay. The Okay, well, anyway, I kind of interrupt you there, but that's, okay, so that's one big. Yeah, so so energy efficiency is a key part of the design. In, in the U.S., it doesn't matter quite as much because power costs are still rel relatively low. Right, right. But it does allow me to go, in a lot of cases, with a slightly smaller, smaller motor than my competitors, mm. electric motor than my competitors. Okay. Uh, and the other thing we do is we, we lean a lot on automation systems, control systems, remote support systems, uh, sonar and GPS systems. So we have a, an InnoDredge operating system that includes a, a, the, in the HMI an air system where you can drill down on the air code that comes up. And it, and it will actually pop up with a red dot on the component in the MCC cabinet or in the PLC cabinet oh, okay. where there's a failure. Oh, okay. and, and so you don't have to have an electrician to go solve the problems. And then all of our machines are connected and we've moved from cellular connections to Starlink. And nice. so they're all connected. So the operator can ring me or one of my technicians and, and they can help walk through the troubleshooting process. Cause one of the things we've learned is most of these sites are really good mechanically, okay. really good mechanically. Yeah. They can fix diesel engines and hydraulic systems and hydraulic right. pumps. Right. But electricity is different. Uh, you know, it's sort of silent. It's, it's hidden. People tend to be a little more afraid of it, and you, and by MSHA rules, you have to have electricians work on them. You, it, not a good idea to have just a mechanic working yeah. on your electrical system. Yeah. And so we, we build remote access into all of our machinery. And so that allows us to help the operator troubleshoot. In a lot of cases, we can reset things without ever having to set foot on the dredge. We can drill in and see where errors are and send apart without ever having to send stand foot on a dredge. So, so now so now these dredges are going up with the Starlink, so they're always connected, basically. Yes. It does, you don't have the cellular issue anymore, no. which has been a huge, that's going to be a huge impact on so much. Inevitably, mine sites are at the end of a cellular band and they're bad, in a bad spot for an electrical of connection, course. right? So, of course. Uh, so yeah, so being able to go to Starlink has been a, a game changer. Uh, the connection speeds are much more reliable and much better. The So that's the, okay, so the InnoView, that's your... So the, that's, the InnoView is our sonar system. Okay, that's separate. Yep, that's, that's a separate machine. So the, right. the InnoView system actually allows the operator to see what's going on underwater. Okay. Right, so so for most of dredging history, you were kind of guessing, and your best operators were really the ones who had the most sensitive seat because uh, they could feel what was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, now they can see it. And okay. so you're, you're sitting in a cab that looks more like the USS Enterprise from Star Trek than an actual dredge used to look. <laughs> yeah. So you've got joystick controls and a couple of big monitors that show you your HMI and your, your OptiView and InnoView uh, sonar system. So it's just like all this new equipment. You've got the whole, that whole cab is just completely techn yes. technology advanced. Yeah, the days of having, you know, when, when I was first introduced to dredging, you had heavy hydraulics, inch and a half hydraulic lines running into the cab and all the heat and oil that came with it. Uh, and then they moved to pilot valves, which was super nice because now you're half inch pipes instead of inch and a half pipes. So okay. that cooled the <laughs> cab down a little bit. Yeah. Now it's all electric. Mm -hmm. And so even on the diesel over hydraulic dredges we build, we won't bring any hydraulics into the cab. It's all electric. So you've got okay. joysticks and push buttons and sensors. And, and then you've got your HMI screens that you can work off of and with drill down menus. And then we can log into and see to help assist. Uh, we've got programs and sub subscription programs that will allow us to provide you with a report weekly, monthly, annually, yep. whatever of, you know, downtime reports or issue reports or right. production reports. And uh, it's extremely powerful, the amount of data that's available.